So let's take a look at so-called structured system development approaches. These approaches, each a different methodology, you could say, are all based on the phases of the SDLC that we have been talking about. And when you hear, hear the term structured, what you should think is that structured implies a structured system development approach or methodology imply, implies that you don't move from one phase to the next until the prior phase has been completed. Now, three main, main variants of the so-called structured approaches is, are the waterfall development approach, the parallel development approach, and the so-called V model. The goal of each is to do each phase thoroughly before moving forward and therefore to ensuring correct and high quality project outcomes. The classic approach is this one, the so-called waterfall development methodology. And by looking at the chart here, you probably can figure out why it's called waterfall. You, you move from planning to analysis to design and implementation in a, in, a, in a lockstep fashion, in a waterfall fashion. That is, you complete all of the, the steps, the tasks, and provide the deliverables for the prior phase before you cascade down, so to speak, to the next phase. And you go through all four, and then you have the system. Now, this approach works, but only for certain types of projects. And note that you can't go backwards. If you get down to the end implementation and you realize you've left something out, in order to fix that, you often have to go all the way back to analysis or maybe all the way back to planning and make major modifications in order to accommodate those requirements that were left out. The so-called waterfall approach is appropriate for certain projects and it does have advantages and disadvantages. Um, one thing for sure, you must have nailed down all of the requirements at the, at the beginning in analysis. You have to spend a lot of time. This is usually a good approach for large complex projects where you have a lot of resources and a lot of time and you, you know or can find out, have a way of determining what all of the requirements are to begin with. And actually that's also an advantage that the, re the requirements are identified long before programming or anything else begins and so requirement changes are limited as the project progresses. But to say that's an advantage is kind of a, a, a misnomer. Um, it's a two-edged sword. If you don't do that, you'll have a horrible failure and mess on your hand. So you know the requirements up front and they're frozen and there aren't any moving targets, so-called um, scope creep. Some weaknesses of the waterfall approach, it takes a long time and the development life cycle is very long, probably the longest of any of these methodologies. So you're investing in a lot of time before you see anything, any evidence of your system, anything that you can use. And um, similarly, it takes a long time from start to finish. Here's one variant of the waterfall approach, so-called parallel development methodologies, where you subdivide the project into sub-projects that can be worked on at the same time. Often this will reduce the overall project length. As you can see in the picture, after the analysis phase, a general design for the entire picture, for the entire project is developed, but then the project is divided into a series of pro uh, sub-projects that can be designed and implemented in parallel. Once all the projects are complete, then there's a final integration of the separate pieces and the system is delivered. Parallel development reduces the time required to deliver a system. So changes in the business environment while the system is being developed are less likely to produce the need for a rework. However, the, the approach still suffers from problems caused by voluminous deliverables, which you also have with the waterfall approach. It also adds a new problem. If the sub-projects are not completely independent, 
design decisions in one subproject may affect another, and at the end of the project, integrating the subprojects can be quite challenging. Yet a third variant is the so-called V-model development methodology, which puts heavy emphasis on testing and in this way uh, emphasizes system quality, doesn't guarantee, but promotes system quality through test plan, not text plan, test plan development. In this visual, the development process proceeds down the left-hand slope of the so-called V, defining requirements and designing system components. And at the base of the, of the V, the code is written. And then on the right, on the upward sloping right side of the model, testing of components, integration testing, and finally acceptance testing are performed. But note, when you're in analysis, when you're in design, you begin to think about acceptance test design, system test design, integration test design, unit test design. So it's, it's higher, it's, it's more visible on the radar, testing is more visible on the radar earlier using the so-called V-model development methodology. A key concept of this model is that as requirements are specified and components designed, testing for those elements is also defined. So in this manner, each level of testing is clearly linked to a part of the analysis or design phase, helping to ensure high quality and relevant testing and, and to maximize test effectiveness. The V-model approach is simple and straightforward and generally improves the overall quality of the system through its emphasis and early development of test plans. That's the hallmark characteristic of the V-model. Projects benefit from an earlier focus on testing, plus the quality assurance personnel's expertise increases the overall quality of the system design. However, it still suffers from the rigidity of the waterfall development process, and that is not always the best for the dynamic nature of a business environment. If you're in a business environment where the requirements are likely to change, over relatively short period of periods of time, the, the waterfall approach is not going to work and you're going to have problems with the parallel approach and the V-model approach as well. These are structured approaches and they assume that you can have a good grasp of the requirements up front. So in the next video, we'll take a look at some other approaches rapid application development, prototyping, and agile approaches.